Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to be talking about lubrication using oil within our radio controlled car, buggy, truck, and so forth. Now, lubrication is a very important part of any type of mechanical system. Anytime you have a couple components that come in contact with each other with either a motion of sliding, rubbing, or rotating, you have an area where friction can be produced. And what we know about friction is that it causes premature wear of a couple components and it also has the potential to rob you of power. Now what you can do in order to prevent that is use what is known as some sort of lubricant. It can be a light oil, a grease, or any other form of lubrication. What the lubrication does is it actually lowers the coefficient of friction between those components allowing you to you know, reduce the amount of power that is consumed by that component or also reduce the amount of premature wear that you can see from those couple components. Let's go through this radio control 1/8 scale buggy that we're going to use as an example today to identify all the areas where friction can occur within the drivetrain as well as the suspension geometry and components. What we'll do is we'll start off with the brushless motor and work our way through the power system or powertrain all the way to where the tire is placed onto the vehicle. Now the tire has been removed so that we're able to see a lot more of what's going on with the vehicle. And another point worth mentioning is I'm not going to go ahead and strip off all the components so that we can see exactly where all the bearings are located. There's going to be bearings on this drivetrain anywhere where you have to support a shaft. So that is in many different locations. We'll start off with the brushless motor because there are a couple bearings also that is found within the motor itself. One at the front and one at the back. And of course, anytime you have a bearing, that is where friction can occur. Right in front of our brushless motor, we have also the pinion gear. So the pinion gear, I don't know if you can get a good shot of that and see it there, it is located right in there. It's actually made up of a metal type material and that mates with also a metal spur gear on this particular buggy. Now that spur gear is relatively small in width even though it is made out of metal. And what I wanna show you is the 1.8 scale on-road vehicle. Even though this here can dump out more than double the power of our 1.8 scale buggy, the material is not the same. What you have here is a large pinion gear and that is made out of steel material. And that is mated to a nylon type material as the spur gear. So you can see that even though this is a higher power outputting radio control vehicle setup, our spur gear is actually made from a nylon versus a metal. And it handles the power no problem. So now once you move from our center gear towards the front differential or the rear differential, what you'll come across is a drive dog. Now a drive dog exists in the front. This is what the drive dog looks like. It's just a steel shaft that transfers power from the center up to the front and in the rear you have the same idea. From the center to the rear you're able to transfer that power. On the ends of each side of the drive dog, you have what is known as like a drive cup. A drive cup has a couple slots in it and the pin of the drive dog is what is received. Now as that assembly rotates, what you can have happen is friction buildup that rubs as, especially if that drive dog is on an angle, very much like the components that we see here. You can see that it's on an angle from our center and moves slightly to the right hand side here in order to reach the rear differential. Anytime that you have an angle like that, you're gonna get increased amounts of potential for wear to occur. Once we end up getting more towards our rear differential, in order to transfer the power from this axis to this axis, there's a couple gears that have to main. Of course, friction can develop in those couple areas. From the rear or front differential, you then have another pair of drive dogs to get the power from that differential out to the wheels. And the last area where power comes through is the bearings that are located inside of this rear block. It would be the same for the front steering block as well and out to the tire. So there you can see, there's a bunch of different areas where friction can occur within our driveline setup. Now what we can talk about is the suspension. Now the suspension in this radio control vehicle has a lot of different linkages. Anywhere from the lower control arm to our upper control arm, which is also known as like the upper turn buckle for most radio controlled vehicles, you can have friction that can occur within the pins where they're hinged, as well as the lower control arm, which is generally a nylon type of plastic on a steel shaft, which is gonna act as the pin. 
and then all of the different areas where you have either a ball joint because you have this rotation as well as the vertical travel of the suspension throughout the steering linkages. And with that said, there's a lot of different areas that what we've just gone over that this covers, you know, because we only went through the right hand side of the front. And of course, all those same components exist on all other areas of the vehicle. So as you can see, there's a lot of areas of the suspension where motion can occur. And of course, where there's motion with two components and they move relative to one another, you can have that friction building up. Now the big question is where is the lubrication placed on a radio control vehicle now that we've gone over all of those different components and the frictional areas as to where friction can build up. Well what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right to the chase and go ahead and say in my experience and in fact for the last several years I have not used any type of lubrication on any of my radio control vehicles. Now there's a couple reasons as to why I don't use lubrication on my radio control vehicles and we'll get to that very shortly. But I do want to point out that both of these have never actually received any type of lubrication for the entire life that they've been around. And this buggy, although this is relatively new, it's only a couple years old, this on-road scale vehicle has a lot more runtime. Um, I can't imagine how many kilometers are actually on this. It would be wicked if it had an odometer, but I, I wouldn't... <laughs> I wouldn't be able to even guess as to how many kilometers are, are on it. Uh, but what I want to point out, the only area where I can actually see significant wear is actually on a drive dog cup. That's where you receive the power from the drive dog. Now, when I say this is the only area that I can see significant wear, when I actually look at it and evaluate it for wear, the wear is almost negligible. There's no sort of major indentation as to where that pin on the drive dog contacts that coupler. In fact, if this vehicle were to be around for another decade, I'm more than likely not going to have a problem due to any sort of premature wear on that component. What is interesting is, that the front end had to be replaced for the most part because of a front end impact at over 100 kilometers an hour. And what ended up happening is my front end got crushed in so badly that the drive dog in the front ended up bending upwards. So I had to go ahead and replace the drive dog as well as even the two cups on both sides because they were also damaged. Those components had to be swapped out before wear could actually set in and cause me any sort of issues. For the most part the rear end is completely stock. So what I'm looking at when I'm going over the rear end of this vehicle is all the stock components and all the wear that is accumulated from the time that this vehicle was first purchased. And what I know is that the amount of power that I've been running through it, the rear end has probably received the most amount of loading because of the nature of the vehicle, meaning that I would see in the rear end the most amount of wear out of the entire vehicle. So now that begs the question as to why would you not want to go ahead and lubricate the vehicle? Well, there's a couple reasons, like I said, why you want to do that. And we'll talk about the first primary one. These radio control vehicles are known for attracting all kinds of dirt, debris, and dust. That is what they are known for. Every time you go out, it doesn't even matter if it's a radio controlled on-road vehicle. This one uh, actually has not been washed since its last run. And you can see, even being only on the road, how much dirt and dust can actually collect on these types of vehicles. Because of that, lubrication that is used on any type of radio control vehicle, on any of the parts and components, will only further attract dirt, dust, and debris in those areas. And that is exactly what can actually prematurely wear out components even quicker than if you were to not use lubrication at all. Now one thing that I am very big on is making sure that you keep your radio control cars and vehicles and that sort of stuff as clean as possible after every run if possible. That's one of the things that we even talked about in the nitro vehicle video that we had not too long ago. That vehicle when I received it, it was very bad in terms of uh, cleanliness and what we did as a first run through is just go through everything and clean it right down. Uh, one of the reasons why this whole attracting dirt and debris is important is because when you do attract dirt, especially in a 1/18th scale vehicle, you can get to the point where it actually chews apart some significant components. For example, I'm going to have to go ahead and replace a second spur gear because dirt and debris got into the gearbox, which is pretty solid and not really all that exposed, and ended up chewing apart the teeth on the spur gear. 
Uh, it's not because of a lack of lubrication. It's because a debris got in there and chew off only one or two teeth within that spur gear. Now I have to go ahead and replace it. Another point to make is that we may actually end up in some sort of collision with our radio control vehicles or anything else that would be along the similar lines, forcing us to replace components before we have the chance to actually wear them out due to a lack of lubrication. My biggest recommendation is definitely to keep your car clean rather than to use lubrication if you are going to choose one over the other. Now let's talk about something else. I know there's guys out there who are like, I am looking for the absolute maximum amount of performance. I definitely want to use a drop of oil on all the key areas within the vehicle that you just went over. How can I possibly do that? Well, I'm not gonna go ahead and say you can't use lubrication. You can use some sort of lubrication and it can be successful as long as you follow these few steps. Uh, the biggest part is going to be talking about the cleaning of the vehicle. But here we go, we're gonna go through exactly what to do and if you follow this procedure, this can work. Grab yourself some light oil, a paper towel, and a cotton-tipped RC oil applicator. For some reason, my wife was keeping these oil applicators in the bathroom. Dip the cotton-tipped applicator into the oil and then lubricate the area that you are most interested in. In this case, we have chosen the drive dog pin and cup that we were talking about earlier in the video. Here we rotate the shaft in order to hit both sides of the drive cup. After getting a small amount of lubricant in the right spot, use paper towel to wipe away all the excess. After each and every run, be certain to clean your car to remove any dust, dirt, or debris that may have collected. Now one of the things that I also ended up doing uh, prior to recording this video is I ended up going through all the radio controlled manuals that I have for each of the vehicles that I have. And I also went through a couple other manuals for vehicles I even don't have. And what I was looking for is within the maintenance area of the manual, where does it state for us to go ahead and lubricate those components? And you know what? Within those manuals, I could not find the manufacturer of the radio control vehicle recommending or even suggesting to go ahead and lubricate some key areas. There's no word or mention of lubrication in any of those manuals in order to identify these key components. And I imagine the reasoning is, is because of some of the things that we just talked about with lubrication and radio control vehicles. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you were able to get something out of it in terms of some insight as to lubrication in our vehicles and what mixes and what doesn't. Even if you are the person that wants to lubricate components, you can make that happen if you follow that specific procedure that I laid out. And if you also want to be like me, that can work too. This is definitely some evidence and proof that even if you don't lubricate over the course of one full decade with significant amount of use on a vehicle you can still end up with a vehicle that is not rendered useless in fact it's probably going to go for yet another decade without being lubricated as long as i don't end up trashing the rest of the vehicle if you like the video please go ahead and smash that like button and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that i can see you in that next video thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next one